Covering the High Plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Sublette, this is High Plains Today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this special edition of High Plains Today. It is my distinct privilege to have in studio today. He is Mr. Josh Svati. He is a Democratic gubernatorial candidate for Kansas. How are you today? I'm good, Chris. You look Thank good. You, you look good. Thanks uh, for coming by today. I've just been to three eye shows, so we had a great well, time. Yeah. How was it? It was it was nice. You know, it was the opening day of the show. Uh, weather it, was good. It, weather, anytime you can step out of the vehicle and it's 72 with a light breeze in Dodge City, you take that day and run with it. It's great. <laughs> All right. So let's start out with who is Josh Svati and why are you running for the Democratic nomination for governor and and to be governor of Kansas. Sure. So I grew up on a farm uh, just outside of Ellsworth. I, actually, for Southwest Kansans that make the drive up to K-State games or anything else, you're driving right through the farm. You go right past the house where I was raised and, and literally go straight through uh, fields that I farm on your way there. We farm right along 156. Okay. Uh, and family's been there for five generations. I served in the state house for seven years, and then I became ag secretary after that, and uh, love the state. Uh, very proud of it, proud of my family's history here. And we've had a, the state has had a rough patch for the last seven years. Uh, some of that is not anyone's fault. It's a tough economy. Some of it's been a bit self-inflicted, and I was intent on fixing that. All right. So one of the things that you talk about, though, is that you want to return Kansas to our Kansas traditions as far as politics. Enlighten me on Kansas traditions. I mean, because you think Kansas traditions, you know, you think back to, you know, Alf Landon and the Casa Bombs yes. and Bob Dole, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, what are you talking about when you talk about Kansas traditions? Absolutely. I, I think that there's, uh, I think we can sense it here in Kansas. I think we also know that people outside of Kansas sense it, that we are a state that is headed backward. Uh, that's either stale or not going anywhere. Uh, and I think people's perception of Kansas historically has been, uh, maybe we're not the flashiest state. We don't have mountains. We don't have coastlines. But we have a sensible government. We pay our bills. Our roads are nice. Our schools are excellent. Uh, we are a great place to raise a family. And we are headed in a positive direction. I remind people all the time, this is the state of Brown versus Board of Education. This is a that's state true. that could have and frankly was designed to be a slave state and stood up and said, no, we're, we're going to be a free state. We gave women the right to vote way before the rest of the country. I mean, we did some forward thinking things that helped ensconce Kansas sort of in the group of people that were always moving in the right direction. And I think that our perception of ourselves uh, and, and people outside of the state uh, think that we're going backwards and we've got to reverse that. We're just a flyover state. Uh, but you hear that all the time, don't you? Uh, you know, people refer to us as a flyover state, but even, even businesses and families that are looking to relocate, um, they're not going to come to a place that feels like it's heading backward. Uh, no matter what tax policy or structure or incentives you offer, if they feel like you are not headed forward, they're not coming there. And all right. So how do you turn that around? How do you turn that, you know, that people have ingrained that, oh, Kansas, that's backwards. It's just a wheat state. It's flat and windy. I mean, how do you turn that around? Sure, and there's nothing we can do about our climate. That's, That's one true. Of the, one That's of the great true. things would, about Kansas. Well, I don't know. Some uh, days you wish you could fix it. But <laughs> anyway. Uh, but there are things we can do as a government. First, you have to have a stable government. Uh, we can't be wondering whether or not we're going to bounce state checks at the end of the fiscal year. So uh, you have to stabilize state finances. Uh, you have to make sure that the fleet of state agencies, not simply K through 12 or, or healthcare or anything else, but everything is taken care of. We have a long-term transportation plan that people can depend on. Uh, but then I also think that um, as a governor, uh, the governor has a role to present the state in a way that demonstrates that we're moving forward. So, uh, and I'm a Democrat, uh, which it's hard for a Democrat to ever win in Kansas anyway. And one of the things I try to talk to other Democrats about, how did I win four times in a Republican district? No unforced errors. You know, don't do anything colossally, you know, brain dead that would invite, uh, invite other states or groups to uh, pigeonhole the state. And that means, 
you know, we either avoid some of the uh, social issues that get us hung up sometimes, or find a way to expand rights and, and demonstrate that we're a state that's moving forward. All right, so you kind of opened this up. All right. I have a question. Go for it. Being de a Democratic candidate, you know, you know, from being a majority of a Republican state, sure. how are you going to, you know, make no errors or whatever? Yeah, yeah. How are you going to talk to Republicans to say, hey, I'm the guy? Sure. I, I think it's important for any Democrat, but it's important for any candidate anyway. Sure. And it starts with meeting voters where they are. Uh, we, the Democratic Party has been running what I pejoratively call a five-county strategy. I mean, you're working Johnson County, Shawnee County, Douglas County, Cedric County, and Wyandotte County, and then you just kind of pick up things here and there. And, and one of the things that I did as a candidate was open with a 105-county tour, campaign everywhere, because um, a lot of Kansans, particularly rural Kansans, don't think that the Democratic Party even speaks for them anymore. And why should they think that if we never go there and campaign? And uh, so you have to campaign. But voters are pretty savvy anyway. And they, they need to feel like they identify with you. And I think that uh, for me, that's where I have a leg up on most other Democrats because... Um, we have, I have family in 34 Kansas counties. Uh, most of them are in north, central, and western Kansas. And that sort of validation by other people is, is valuable. 34 uh, counties? It's 34 counties. That and, is a big, and, Josh, that is a big family reunion. It's a big family reunion. And, and <laughs> it's 34 counties that I know of. <laughs> There's, there could be more, um, but we... Uh, we are nothing if not prolific, and we've been in the state for <laughs> yeah. a long time, and uh, I love it. Uh, you know, that's yeah. uh, both my, the 34 counties is just my dad's side. My mom's side could expand it even more. Whew. All right. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, though, I want to get into some of these other things like education, health care, tra transportation, and, those, and, you know, and the economy in sure. Kansas, okay? Stick around, the good Mr. Spotty, and I'll be back right after this. You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. Hi, I'm Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today a 30-minute news and information program that airs at noon weekdays right here on TV23. Hey, do you think you have an idea for something that would make a great segment? Somebody that would make a great interview? What about a community event that needs highlighting? Let us know here at the station. Email us, news at kbgltv.com. Hi, right, welcome back to the special edition of High Plains Today. Again, I am joined in studio today by Josh Svati. He is the he is a Democratic yes. gubernatorial candidate for Kansas. All right. So we've talked a little bit about who Josh Svati is. You were Secretary of Agriculture. You have a brother who is an educator. I, I do. In fact, he's the lead teacher on the classroom redesign. At, yes, at know, the liberal, high school. Liberal yes. is one of the Gemini schools, yes. and, which is really exciting. Yeah. Uh, the, Merc the Mercury, Mercury 7. Yeah, yes. the Mercury yeah, 7. Yeah, we've had yeah. his principal, Ashley uh, Kappelman, was up here. We talked about that yes. one day. So, yeah, that's a big deal. It so, is. all right, so let's talk a little bit about education. Because, you know, the legislature has been slapped with this deal. They got their results back, and I don't think they were happy with them, uh, that says they're going to have to add a ton of money to school funding. And, you know, you talk about... As governor, you know, we need to fund education. So, first of all, what do you think of the report that came out? And, and as far as financing education from a year-to-year -year basis, where do you see this going? Sure. So, the report, you know, had a, a range of numbers, but they were all, uh, most of them had a B behind them. You know, $1.74 billion or $2 billion plus a little bit. Uh, I think that a lot of this is a question of how much the Kansas economy can stand right now. And, and uh, any, anyone involved in the process would probably say those numbers are a little high. But what did come out of the report uh, was clear data showing that, one, schools 
spend their money pretty efficiently. Uh, and school boards can tell you this, they're democratically elected. If, if people feel like schools aren't spending their money well, they have an immediate recourse they could take, but most school board individuals stick around for a while and people are generally happy with how their schools are spending the money. The other thing they showed is that there is a direct correlation between academic outcomes and dollars spent on education. And so if we want higher academic outcomes, then we have to spend more money. Uh, now, it's, the state does not have a lot of money right now. Uh, and I think, I think that's an understatement. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> be prepared, saying. be prepared. I'm going <laughs> to shock you with some news. Um, and, and it's not simply that we don't have a lot of money. It's also that um, K through 12 is not the only facet of state government that's right. been underfunded. Uh, and so the balancing act that the current legislature is going to have to do, and then the in next incoming governor is going to have to do, is, is how, do we, how do we get where we need to be with funding for schools without shortchanging the other range of important state government functions uh, at the same time? And that's going to be hard. Okay, so you've got the far right, you know, like the Kansas Policy Institute, et cetera, et cetera, that, you know, Kansas does not have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem. And then you've got other people that say, no, we've got to raise this if we're going to fund this. So, I mean, where do you come in line with, with both? Those are both extreme ends. And I mean, how are you going to, how would you bring those together? Well, I think we've seen over the last seven years uh, what government looks like when it's, when it's starved. Uh, and, and that's why we're seeing 70 children lost in the DCF system. And and a transportation plan that really doesn't exist anymore for the state, and, and contractors leaving the state trying to find work elsewhere. So you know, we've, seen, we've seen one end of the spectrum. Uh, now we have a duty to taxpayers and to Kansans in general to make sure that any dollars that we spend, spend at the state level are efficient uh, and used wisely. Uh, these are our tax dollars, and nobody wants them being frivolously thrown at something just to help maybe solve a problem. But uh, we, we know that uh, we don't like the level of services coming from our government right now. Uh, no one wants to see children lost. And some of that is management, uh, but some of that is the net result of hemorrhaging quality people because they've gone to look for work in the private sector because the state's just not paying them enough. Or they disrespect them so much that they leave. So they need more money. Um, and... And my goal and my philosophy, and this carries back to when I was in the legislature, is finding that right middle ground to where um, the, the general public in Kansas doesn't have to wake up every day thinking about their state services because they function in a way that everything just works well. Uh, and right now, I think everybody sitting around with your coffee in the morning, whether some of that's coming from the federal level too, but... It's federal and state. Everyone's just like, oh, my gosh, you know, what else is going wrong uh, right now? And we've got to get past that point. Okay. So let me ask you this. All right. And we got like a couple minutes left in this sure. segment. But now, do you think this is a Republican or a Democratic problem? I mean, that it can be individualized to a party in Topeka or not? So, you know, part of where we, part of the problem we found ourselves in was clearly from the tax decision made in 2012. And, and there's you know, no questioning who was behind that, but that's, uh, that's only a part of the story. It, it's also that that tax shift happened right as our ag and oil and gas economies dropped. And I don't blame that on anyone, that just happened. Right. Uh, but part of being a governor is understanding that Kansas has the capacity to do that. We are a natural resources state. Southwest Kansas uh, you know, knows that fundamentally because Anadarko Basin, I mean, you have natural gas fields here, you have uh, oil and gas, and then you are big ag. Those swing up and down. And we know they swing up and down, irrespective of policies that we can have at the state or federal level. So if you know that in advance, you need to be really careful when you tinker with the tax policy. Uh, you, you are better off having a stable tax policy because you know your principal economies, ag and oil and gas, are going to swing up and down. And right now, we've swung down hard. Oil and gas is starting to come back, but ag's got a ways, got a ways to go. All right. Okay. Stay right there.
Josh and I are going to come back right after this. We're going to get a little bit into maybe a little bit about can care and KDOT, et cetera, et cetera. So stick around. We'll be back right after this. Hi, Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs weekdays at noon right here on TV 23. We talk about news. We talk about sports. We talk about weather. We're even going to talk entertainment. We'll have live guests right here on set with me. So, every day at noon, tune in High Plains Today. We'll see you then. Weekdays here on TV 23. Welcome back. Special edition High Plains Today. He is Josh Svati. He is the one of the Democratic gubernatorial candidates for governor, state of Kansas. All right, we've talked about ag. We've talked about education. We've talked about why you're doing this. Okay. I want to know... Let's, let's talk a little bit about can care because first we were going to do 2.0, then we weren't, and the current governor, he was kind of the architect of this whole can care deal, and so it's all kind of up in the air still, isn't it? I mean, what are we going to do as far as health care for the state of Kansas? And can care specifically to that, and this is the system by which we administer programs for uh, low-income individuals, disabled individuals. Uh, it, it touches a lot of lives throughout Kansas. These contracts, these can care contracts, are with out of state companies and they are long term and they are for multiple hundreds of millions of dollars, if not larger than that. So the state needs to make sure if we're gonna if we're gonna commit ourselves to that kind of money, that we're getting exactly what we expect out of it. And that's not just exactly what the state expects, but the level of care for these individuals uh, that they need around the state. And what I've heard statewide is that people are not receiving that care. That it was supposed to improve care to individuals. It was supposed to improve efficiency uh, at the state level. And it was also supposed to improve reimbursements for providers and reduce the overall bureaucracy for providers. And, and what we're hearing is that providers have had to hire additional people to, to get reimbursed from the state for work they've not already done. They can't get the reimbursements. Um, individuals aren't receiving the care that they expected. Initially, I thought it might be worth us pulling certain groups out of can care. You know, the, the individual dis, uh, disability groups, IDDs, uh, take them out. Uh, after we started um, working more with it, I, I'm not so sure that we don't need an entire sort of tear down and rebuild on can care. Uh, it's not as though we haven't used managed care before. Uh, MCOs, the, the structure by which we, we're trying to do this. Uh, so I'm not saying that MCOs can't work, uh, but currently as it's, as it's happening in the state, they're, they're not providing the level of service they need to be. So will the out-of-state companies that are involved in it now, I mean, are they going to have to remain involved? It depends on how long Who those they are contracts... they are Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on how long those contracts uh, exist for CanCare 2.0. Uh, and I think that the current legislature, to their wisdom, is watching pretty closely. Yeah, because you say what nine billion dollars? Uh, I don't know if it's, services and stuff, or around there, is what's controlled by the out-of-state companies. Uh, it, as it's, far as it's in a the large, care now, it's a large price tag for sure. That is big. Yeah, that's another one of those numbers yeah. with a B. Yes, <laughs> and anytime you know, Kansas does not have a big uh, state budget. Uh, it, it, so anytime you start getting into the B word, yes. uh, it, it, it's high. You need to be paying paying close attention. All right. So let's just go to another B word. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about KDOT. Yes. Department of Transportation. Because over the last several years, the bank of KDOT, as we like to refer to it, has been drained of two plus billion dollars itself. And, you know, and you've been out here in western Kansas. You grew up in central Kansas not in the northeast part of the state or Metro Wichita, but you know what the infrastructure looks like in Kansas. And, and I, what I'm trying to tell people around Kansas is it's not simply having paved roads too, but we are a natural resource state. We're producers. So for us to be competitive on a global marketplace, we, you know that uh, competitive edge comes from the infrastructure we have in place so that we can beat other entities uh, to the market with our commodities. And sometimes it's coming down to pennies. So whether it's rail or road or, you know, also air, but you know, particularly for our heavy industries and our commodities, rail and roads, are we investing 
to make sure that we are competitive uh, with other groups that are producing these same products. And if we're not, then it's not just that we're going to have bumpy roads, but we are losing our competitive edge. And you know it in southwest Kansas because uh, that's why I tell people, you've got to drive the state because you get down here and you drive and you notice something right away. There's a lot of heavy truck traffic carrying ag products around. That's a good sign because it's a sign that says your ag economy is moving and it's healthy. Uh, but when you increase the number of truck traffic, uh, the amount of truck traffic on the road, then it makes it harder for vehicles. You know, it's harder to pass. You want more four-lane roads. You have to make the investment to accommodate that, and you will continue then to see the growth in the ag economy. Uh, but if you're not making that investment, uh, then the infrastructure starts to slip quite a bit. Yeah, because we keep wiping, swiping stuff out of the bank of KDOT, then that infrastructure starts to deteriorate, and then there goes your economic development and those types of things, right? Absolutely. Okay. And uh, to say nothing of the fact that Kansas is home to a lot of great highway contractors that employ a lot of people, yeah. but they're only here because there was a steady supply of work to be done in the state. That's a flywheel effect. And if that, that uh, flywheel comes to a halt, then it takes years to get that built back up. And we are, we're losing contractors out of the state. All right. Okay. We got about 30 seconds left. I want you to look right here, and you just tell everybody whatever you want to tell them. This 30 seconds is yours, Josh. Well, this right here. sure, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here in Sublette. Uh, I've got, of course, family, immediate family that lives down in Liberal, but it's been a joy for me to campaign around the state because 2018 is a crucial year for Kansas. It's an opportunity for us to demonstrate to ourselves and everybody else that this is a state that's moving forward, and I think that it's a generational election. And I know that uh, when my wife and I look at our four, four kids, uh, we're proud of the state they live in, and we want them to be a part of it for a long time. But it's incumbent upon us now at this stage of our lives, pick up the mantle, fix the state, and make it the great state that it's been for its 150-year-plus history. Josh, thanks for coming by today. You know you have an open invitation. Thank you. Anytime you get back to the great Southwest, stop and see us, will you? I'll do it. All right. Thank you, sir. And thanks for joining us on this special edition of High Plains Day. See you next time. Keep up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL-TV.